Ever wondered how to transform a dying plant into a thriving green marvel? Wonder no more. Picture this, a plant on the brink of death, leaves wilted and yellowed, soil dry and crumbling. Now imagine that same plant, lush, vibrant and full of life. You're probably asking yourself, how did we make this incredible transformation? Well, that's the magic we're about to reveal. So buckle up, plant lovers. Stay tuned as we uncover the secrets to plant rejuvenation. In this guide, we'll walk you through the process of diagnosing problems, proper watering techniques, the right sunlight, soil amendments, and when to repot. Picture this. You've got a plant that's seen better days. Its leaves are yellowing, its soil is dry, and you can't help but think, what's going wrong? Don't worry, we've got you covered. We'll start by showing you how to identify the issues. Is it overwatering, underwatering, or perhaps a pesky pest has made your plant its home? Once we've pinpointed the problem, we'll move on to watering techniques. Not all plants are created equal, and we'll show you how to tailor your watering routine to each plant's needs. We'll also discuss the importance of sunlight and where to place your plants for optimal growth. And finally, we'll delve into soil amendments and repotting, two crucial steps for keeping your plants healthy and vibrant. Let's dive deeper into the first step, diagnosing plant problems. Identifying the issue is the first step to reviving your plant. There's a whole host of issues that your plants might be facing, but don't worry, we're here to help you diagnose and treat them. Let's start with the most common culprit, overwatering. If your plant's leaves are turning yellow and wilting despite the soil being wet, you might be giving your green friend a bit too much love. The solution? Hold off on watering until the top inch of soil is dry to the touch. Moving on, underwatering is just as problematic. This is often recognized by drooping leaves and dry crumbling soil. To rectify this, ensure your plant is receiving its recommended amount of water. Remember, different plants have different hydration needs. Next, we have pest infestations. If you notice tiny spots or web-like structures on your plant, you might have uninvited guests. Aphids, spider mites and mealybugs are common plant pests. Don't panic though, there are natural remedies like neem oil that can help you get rid of these pesky intruders. Nutrient deficiencies often show up as discoloured or distorted leaves. This could mean your plant is lacking in essential nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus or potassium. A balanced plant fertiliser can typically resolve this issue. Another common issue is leaf scorch, which presents as brown, crispy leaf edges. This is often due to excessive light or heat. The fix? Simply move your plant to a spot with less direct sunlight. Last but not least, if your plant's growth seems stunted or its leaves are falling off, it might be root-bound. In this case, it's time to give your plant a new home. Repotting can often solve this problem. Diagnosing plant problems might seem daunting at first, but armed with this knowledge, you'll be well equipped to identify and address any issues that come your way. Remember, every plant is different, and what works for one plant might not work for another. It's all about observing your plant, understanding its needs, and responding accordingly. Now that we know the problems, let's discuss the right watering techniques. Water, too little or too much, can be a problem. Let's find the balance. Watering may seem straightforward, but it's more of an art than a science. Different plants have different needs, and understanding these can be the difference between a wilted leaf and a flourishing garden. Let's start with succulents and cacti, champions of the desert. These hardy plants are designed to survive in arid climates, storing water in their leaves, stems or roots. As a rule of thumb, they prefer to dry out completely between waterings. If the top inch of soil is dry, it's time to give them a drink. But remember, when it comes to these drought-tolerant plants, less is more. Overwatering can lead to root rot, a plant's nightmare. On the flip side, we have tropical plants like ferns and philodendrons. These guys love their water and prefer consistently moist, but not waterlogged soil. If the top layer of the soil feels dry, it's time to water. A good technique to use is the soak and drain method. Water your plant until you see it coming out of the bottom of the pot then let it drain completely. This ensures the water reaches the deeper roots without causing waterlogging. Now let's talk about your average house plants, the peace lilies, pothos and snake plants of the world. These plants prefer their soil to be kept slightly moist. A good rule of thumb is to water them once the top half inch of soil is dry. And remember, it's always better to underwater than overwater. 
Of course, these are just general guidelines. Each plant is unique and its watering needs can change with the seasons, the environment and its growth stage. It's essential to observe your plants, learn their preferences and adjust your watering schedule accordingly. So whether you're nurturing a prickly cactus or a leafy fern, remember this. Watering is not just about quantity, but also about timing. And with a little patience and observation, you can master this delicate balance, giving your plants exactly what they need to thrive. With watering sorted, let's move on to sunlight and placement. Sunlight, it's all about getting the right amount. It's a balancing act, really. Too much sun and your leafy friends might end up with a tan they didn't ask for, too little and they might be left feeling a bit under the weather. Let's paint a picture. Imagine a plant basking in the relentless noonday sun, its leaves turning a crispy brown. Now, picture the same plant, placed where it gets gentle morning sun and a break in the afternoon. Notice the difference? It's like a mini plant spa day, every day. On the flip side, consider a plant hidden away in a dark corner, its leaves drooping, yearning for light. Now, see it in a spot where it gets a few good hours of indirect light. It's like we've thrown it a lifeline and it's back in the game, full of vim and vigour. Remember, it's not about the quantity, but the quality of light. Next up, we'll tackle soil amendments and repotting. Sometimes it's all about giving your plant a new home and better soil. Let's talk about soil amendments first. These are materials you add to your potting mix to improve its physical properties. Think of them as a health boost for your plant's home. Perlite, compost and vermiculite are some popular choices. Perlite, for instance, is a type of volcanic glass that has been heated until it pops like popcorn. It's lightweight, porous and fantastic for drainage. Compost, on the other hand, is rich in nutrients and helps improve soil structure. Vermiculite is similar to perlite, but it also has the ability to retain water, making it great for plants that prefer moist conditions. Mixing in these amendments is simple. Start by removing about one third of your existing soil. Then, add in your chosen amendment and mix until it's evenly distributed. Your plants will thank you for this upgrade. Now, let's talk about repotting. Sometimes your plant outgrows its current pot and it's time to move it to a bigger one. You might notice roots poking out of the drainage holes or the plant might become top heavy and tip over. These are clear signs that it's time for a new pot. When repotting, be gentle to avoid damaging the roots. Start by tipping the plant on its side and carefully easing it out. Then, place it in a new pot that's one or two sizes larger. Fill around the plant with fresh potting mix, making sure to leave some space at the top for watering. Remember, repotting can be stressful for plants. So, after you've moved your plant, give it a good drink of water and place it in a shady spot for a few days to help it adjust. Avoid these common mistakes for healthier plants. Over-fertilizing can burn your plants and neglecting pest control can lead to infestations. Regularly check your plants for signs of pests and adjust your fertilizing routine based on the plant's needs. You'll be rewarded with vibrant, healthy plants that are a joy to behold. Mistakes are part of the process, but here's how to avoid the most common ones. When it comes to plant care, over-fertilization is a frequent mistake. We're often tempted to give our plants an extra nutritional boost, but overdoing it can lead to salt buildup, damaging the roots. So, remember, less is more. Another common error is neglecting pest control. These tiny invaders can wreak havoc on your plants if left unchecked. Regularly inspect your plants for signs of pests and treat any infestations promptly. Watering on a fixed schedule, regardless of the plant's needs, is another pitfall. Not all plants need the same amount of water, and their needs can change with the seasons. Lastly, using the wrong soil type can spell disaster. Different plants have different soil needs, and using the wrong type can lead to poor growth or even disease. By avoiding these common blunders, you're on the right path to plant revival. You're now ready to revive your plants. Armed with these tips, you can turn any wilted leaf into a thriving plant. Imagine the satisfaction of seeing your plants bounce back to life stronger and healthier. Don't forget, we're on this journey together. Share your success stories or even your questions right here in the comments section. And if you found this guide helpful, click that subscribe button. There's a whole world of plant care advice waiting for you. Let's bring more green into our lives. Start reviving your plants today.